I would say City Philippines represents almost all aspects of cities franchise around the world. So we have everything on the ground. Uh, we have our very, very strong consumer bank, as I talked about uh, mm -hmm. credit cards, yeah. mobile banking, that's part of our consumer bank. Mm -hmm. We also have a very strong corporate and investment bank, which has been very active. In the last four weeks, uh, we've done four different transactions uh, through our investment bank. Uh, we launched the Global Peso, which was the first local currency global issue done by any uh, Asian government in the world. What is that? Well, can you describe it? For, sure. Yeah. Uh, Global Peso is like a fixed income bond issued by oh, okay. the Republic of the Philippines. Yeah. It is, uh, it is, the way it is issued is that it is uh, an issue in pesos. So effectively the investor is taking a peso risk, but it is settled in dollars. And uh, Since it's settled in dollars, we can settle it overseas. Right. So it makes it very convenient for investors who are interested in uh, in investments into the Philippines and taking exposures into Philippines fixed income uh, markets right. to be able to do it uh, through these offshore entities uh, so that's as in well. partnership with central bank then uh, no this is through the Bureau of Treasury and the Department of Finance All right. uh, in addition to that uh, we did a very successful debt exchange for the Republic of the Philippines and followed that by the first corporate debt exchange out of the Philippines for SMIC and then we close the Cebu Pacific IPO. What is SMIC? Sorry, this is the Shumart Investment oh, Corp. Oh, SM, okay, SM. Uh, yeah. And the Cebu Pacific, the airlines, uh, mm -hmm. again, the uh, IPO was the largest IPO from a budget airline in the world, which was closed uh, last week. And as of yesterday, we did a $300 million bond transaction for oh. BDO. Uh, which is the lowest yield ever for a corporate debt in the Philippines. So it's been a phenomenal week for us on the corporate and investment bank side. Wow. In wow. addition to that, we also have uh, our shared services and our, what you call the BPOs based out of the Philippines. Uh, again, going back into history, uh, not too many people know that uh, in, uh, in the Philippines, City was probably the first BPO ever set up way back in 1996. Way before Sykes and Converges and be, way before this wave of call center, Citibank was already active in this industry. That's right. Way before uh, even BPO was coined. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about the mid-90s. So it was way back in 1996 when we brought our first shared service center into the Philippines and now that has grown and we have over two and a half thousand people working. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the work is being done for offices outside of the Philippines and uh, as I mentioned, uh, the work we started in 1996 today uh, is able to cater to uh, about 80 to 90 countries uh, from here, right in the Philippines. Is there any, any aspect of the Philippine legal system, uh, the Philippine uh, social system that makes it a much more better playing ground for banks such as yours compared to the other nations in the region. Is there something about the Philippines that says, hey, that's an easy place to work it off. Let's put our head office there. Let's put our branch office there. Is there any differentiator? What are the differentiators? Again, I think going back uh, to the late 90s when we came in here, uh, the concept of uh, ROHQ, which is the Regional Operations Headquarters, yes. was formed. And uh, we took advantage of the ROHQ to be able to uh, set up Mm. Our, uh, our offshore services center which catered for financial reporting as I mentioned now to over 80 to 90 uh, countries. So I think there were things that made it conducive for us to look at Philippines uh, even, even back then. Of course the primary factor uh, why people are moving their uh, businesses into the Philippines in terms of offshoring as well as outsourcing is the people, is yeah, the, the people. talent that is available here. Uh, and the skills and the expertise and the culture uh, which makes it easier for them to relate to the services which are being offered around the world. I sneaked in through some of the offices of Citibank in the last couple of weeks and I talked to people and uh, I said how does it feel to work in Citibank? How does it work to f how does it feel to work for Sanjeev? How does it feel to work for Citibank? And they all said that Citibank is a school We'd like to come here, we like Citibank on our resume, and it kind of hones us and trains us for life. So what about Citibank's internal structure, internal education system makes it such a place? And what part do you play? Uh, 
Well, first and foremost, again, going back to our marketing campaign, uh, we've also launched uh, our, our new ads which says careers powered by city and which is absolutely true. <laughs> if you really go back to uh, in terms of the in, in terms of the alumni of city in the Philippines, I guess we really have the who's who. Uh, to the extent when I came in in 2005 and I wanted to really talk about who my competition is and show me you know who are major banks uh, in the Philippines uh, and lo and behold I looked at the list uh, I think 12 out of the 15 banks either had a president CEO or a chairman which was, was an ex city, former city uh, yeah. we've had uh, in fact the governor of yeah. the central bank in 2005 unfortunately mm -hmm. we lost uh, governor Pine Bonaventura is an ex city banker mm -hmm. the treasurer of Republic of the Philippines in 2005 was ex city bank and today the energy minister the secretary Alamandris is uh, also Almost from the city, city alumni yeah. so I think uh, jokingly within within the uh, within the bank uh, we refer ourselves as university and we spell it U N I V E R C I T I okay so we call ourselves the university of city. banking uh, and to an effect I think it is correct uh, what really makes us unique in terms of development of talent is the fact that we are able to offer exposure and training right from the word go for our people. Apart from that, uh, we provide diverse, uh, I guess, uh, areas for people to work in, diverse geographies for people to experience as, you know, I'm one case, uh, you know, I've worked in multiple countries already. And as I mentioned earlier, people are our most important asset. So what you really get by working in city is to work with the best talent and it feeds in itself in a way. You work with the best talent, you work in an environment that uses the state of the art technology and gives you exposure into multiple things. What, what, what additional futures, what, what kind of turnarounds you have personally created coming from your Indian background into this learning organization that is Citibank? What have you done in the last five years that has been different? A couple of things. I think one we have done is uh, we had a very successful management associates program in India uh, and I'm a product of that as well uh, where we hire uh, postgraduates, usually graduates with management or other postgraduate degrees and then put them through what we call a management development program which starts with the orientation I went through in the Philippines uh, in 1986 which probably gives you an idea of how long back that was. <laughs> uh, but in terms of, uh, so you know we try and build that talent through the years, uh, give them stretch assignments, make them grow and give them the right kind of training. What we have done over the last couple of years is taken leadership training to another level. Uh, obviously we realize that for us to grow we need to identify the generation, the next generation of leaders within city. So our leadership program now starts from you being an individual. So we have training programs as an individual, then we have what we call leadership uh, at city yeah. number one yeah. which is when you start managing people, leadership at city two which is when you start managing managers of other people and then leadership at city three so we have actually about five or six uh, different uh, layers or tiers of training to develop leaders and to identify them and to hone them uh, to be successful uh, in, in, in the city. lifetime of city in the lifetime of city was there any individual any single individual person who you can uh, attribute this learning culture of city to I, I don't think it'll be fair for me to uh, name one individual. Yeah. I think uh, I would say that uh, there are many, many individuals. Actually, my philosophy really has been to learn at every instance. Right. Uh, it's not really learning uh, just as uh, somebody you would treat as a role model or you treat as a mentor. Frankly, I haven't really had a mentor uh, yeah. because I treat everybody I interact with as a mentor of some sort, yeah. uh, be it you know somebody who's six year old like my daughter I would learn from her as well or you know I would learn from somebody like yourself I'm sitting here so my my whole philosophy really has been to evolve and try and sort of learn at every stage uh, at so every instance the actually. city has had no heroes like Jack Welch or Bill Gates nobody in its history that say hey we look up to a leader is there anyone in the city I think we've had many, we uh, many yeah. you know we've had many in fact uh, 
Walter Riston, uh, he was our chairman for many, many years. Uh, he retired uh, in the 80s, uh, followed by John Reed. Uh, then we had Sandy Weil. Uh, and now we have Vikram Pandit. So in, in New York. In New York. Mm -hmm. Great. Sir, uh, you are one of the pioneers who have brought together the consumer banking division and the corporate banking division here since you come in. No? And what has this created for Citibank? And banking as a whole in the in in the in the region I think it has uh, basically re-energized a uh, city uh, to realize its true potential uh, what this has done for us is to create one city as we call it a yeah. one city management structure yeah. which combines all the strengths and leverages the franchise to its fullest uh, case in point being that today we are offering our consumer bank services to the employees of our corporate customers. So we would leverage on our corporate relationships to be able to provide our consumer services like accounts, credit cards, insurance and investments for employees of our corporate clients, uh, which we call City at Work. Uh, we've recently launched commercial cards, which is complementary to the credit cards for consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really commercial cards which is used by corporates for their payment requirements etc again leveraging on our cards platform our understanding of that product uh, to be able to do it for the corporates prior to that what were the reasons for other banks or other institutions to keep them apart what were the reasons that they were hold, held apart in, are bank? you talking about the businesses yeah i think it it's all in terms of the stage of development of the businesses itself. Right. So if you really want to give the focus and you want to grow that business in a very focused way, you want to give it the right kind of attention, uh, you want to standardize it across all geographies, mm -hmm. it makes sense to run that business in a vertical. Mm -hmm. uh, once you've stabilized those businesses and now you want to really realize the full potential and leverage that franchise, uh, then it makes sense to put them together and take it to the so next it's level. the process of evolution that's come along for you. That's for right. Citibank. That's right. Now, Citibank is also very high on technology and innovation. And one of the things that you do is that you verify most of the transactions on phone. You get them reconfirmed. And recently, you're coming up with a voice recognition technology, which is to be launched either in Australia or something. Uh, in terms of innovations and technology, what kind of thinking keeps you thinking ahead of the curve? And what is this new technology going to do? Can sure. you share that with us? For us, uh, there are two tenets to product development and innovation. Yeah. And it is speed and simplicity. So everything that we do is basically catering towards those two elements uh, of delivery and of product features. Uh, does it really make it convenient for our clients and our uh, you know, prospective clients or uh, existing clients? Yeah. Uh, and can we, uh, you know, make it faster? Because and safer. It, and safer, of yeah, course. Yeah. Uh, I think safer is the backdrop it's of everything that we yeah. do because that's how we maintain the trust uh, of our customers with us. So that's really the overarching uh, theme. But within that, speed and simplicity are the two areas that we focus on. Uh, to give you an example, we've recently launched uh, what we call City Mobile Payments. Now that allows our credit card holders to be able to charge their purchases through their mobile phone. So it's very popular with working mothers because when they are driving home... It sounds unsafe though. It's very safe. It has, right. a, it has a security feature which allows you to uh, authorize payments uh, to buy pizzas, hamburgers, flowers, uh, even to load your uh, telephone. Wow. You can all do it through your phone and uh, all you need to do is register it once with us. You call City Phone 995-9999 mm -hmm. and they will help you register for City Mobile Payments. All right, Sanjeev, uh, we are we're coming to a break, for one more break, people who pay for this show. And after we come back, I'd like to ask you about money, wealth building and a little bit about what you do to make this country a better place to live in. So we'll take that break and we'll come back with Sanjeev Bora. We are still with him. And this is Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raj Mahathir.